Hey guys, this is going to be my journey to building a brushless based quadruped robot. What I've got here are the basic actuator that is that are going to make up the robot. This here is version one where I had different size uh, belts than the ones I got now. And this is version two that I am just finishing up building. This robot will use these very, very cheap brushless motors that I found online. These are actually not that great. The winding is not pretty and the materials in sometimes feel cheap, but they will work just fine for this application. In the actuator, we've got a double stage belt reduction with a nine to one reduction uh, from the output and the input. The heart of the actuator is actually the Dagger brushless controller that I've been developing these last few months. And in here, in the actuator, we've got the diametrically polarized magnet that is used by the encoder on the back of the Dagger board. This is gonna sit here and I'm going to be able to read the position of the rotor since the this magnet is connected to the rotor here and with that i should be able to control the position of the output these are all 3d printed parts the big case is made out of, of solutec peggy which i find is a little bit brittle but it should be fine for these first actuator tests and I made sure to make the walls very, very sturdy, very rigid. It may weigh more than it should, but it should be fine. All the black parts are printed with Hatchbox Black PLA. With this actuator, I'm using two 180 millimeter HTD 3M pulleys, and I'm also using five bearings. Two bearings are being used at the output pulley, Two bearings are being used at the compound pulley and one bearing is used at the input pulley just to add a little bit of stability and a, a little bit of strength to the motor shaft. This project is influenced and inspired by the Solo 8 and Solo 12 robots from the Open Dynamic Robot Initiative. I highly recommend you check their awesome work out. I'm going to show you a quick clip that I got er earlier where I modified this motor and attached a larger shaft so that I could uh, attach the input pulley to the motor. I have to replace the original shaft of the motor with a longer one. The original shaft comes at around 3.95-96-97 millimeters and I'm going to use this 832 screw that comes at around 4.1 millimeters. What I'm gonna do is put the screw on my electric drill and file it down until it's roughly the same size as the original shaft and I can insert the new shaft through the bearings and press fit the new shaft in the rotor. I 3D printed this part that attaches to the rotor so I can hammer the new shaft in without damaging the rotor itself. This is the second time I attempt this. The first one was without the 3D, 3D printed part. The second one as you saw with the 3D printed part and it seems that I, ju I just can't seem to put the a new shaft perfectly straight as you can see this wobbles a little bit so it seems like i will have to find a new way to make the shaft of the original motor longer but for now this should work just fine so i'm going to assemble it i made sure to save this tiny ring and it goes like this and then we're gonna feel a, a bit of a snap. I'm almost done with the assembly of the second actuator module, but before I put the cover on, I just want to make sure everything is working as intended. 
I actually have a tiny antenna that is connected to the Dagger board. This will allow me later on to talk w wirelessly to the actuator. I'm just gonna make sure everything works by powering the system on. The motor does a bit of a sensor calibration. And now we are closed loop position controlling the actuator. I finished the assembly of the whole leg. I'm not sure if this robot is going to have two or three degrees of freedom per leg, but right now I'm just gonna stick with two degrees of freedom. As you can see, these actuators are very easily back drivable, which is going to help a lot with the stability of the robot and natural compliance. Right now, I just control the position of the actuators with my ESP now controller but in next video I'm going to calculate the inverse kinematic model of the system and I'm going to build a proper test stand.